I'm Wendy Gilbert and welcome to Venice in Acrylics. Venice is full of the most beautiful coloured reflections and I'm going to be painting a typical bridge scene. I've transferred the image from the tracing paper onto my watercolour paper ready to be working with. First of all, I'm going to be masking off a few areas with masking fluid and my ruling drawing pen. We're going to be using various methods and one of the methods is going to be watercolour. The watercolour way, lovely and wet into wet washes and then tightening up with some perhaps thicker paint a bit later on. Venice bridges are extremely interesting because they've got so many different designs, shapes and material they're made from. And there are 420 bridges in Venice. And I've photographed a lot of them. It's quite complicated this because the bridge has definitely got to be absolutely architecturally right and structurally right. Otherwise, you feel very uneasy even trying to cross it. Even if you're just looking at a painting, it's got to be right. And there's a reflection in the water. Every time you do water, you need to do a zigzag to portray the action and gentle sway of the water. Zigzag, because it's that reflected and that reflected. Then these doors, the other side, are reflected. Zigzag again, there we go, and the other side. Top of the roof, yeah. roof line. The curve of the window. What's so good about the masking fluid is that it cuts off the details from the washes that you're going to be putting on and you can be as free as you like but in the end when everything's dried you can rub back to those details and they've been saved so it's an extra bonus and a light hair wonderful lights they've got in Venice very ornate some swirls there we go I'm going to put the railings. Now I'd feel quite safe crossing that bridge, I think. Nice and strong and accurate. I'll just put in this window here, a zigzag across here and down again. So we've got everything reflected in the water that we need to. And I think that completes that, yes, yes. The first thing I'm going to do is just to wash everything over with water and then splodge on some very colourful, delicate washes. And this is all acrylics, of course, in a watercolour way. So wash those on. And this is a pink with cadmium, red and white. Wash this right down into the water. The rule is whatever's up there comes down into the water. Perhaps a lovely streak of, of yellow into there. A bit more yellow the other side. That yellow echoing in the water. And some more pink. strokes down into the water and this surface here needs to be just a little bit darker perhaps with some burnt sienna which will be slightly covered over with shadows later but the vibrant colour needs to show through that shadow so we want to put that in straight away. Perhaps a bit of colour there, a bit of 
of color there. And some orange around here. So it's vibrant, it is really lovely and vibrant. Get a bit of light blue in the background. So I'm putting some blue there. Down through the back. chimneys and whatnots. I don't quite know what it is, but just put that into the background and wash that in there. And a little bit of blue in here at the moment. Some green shutters. Let those run slightly. And green there. And green there. They seem to have got some quite lovely deep green wine green. It's lovely colour. Seems very very popular for the, all their kind of shutters. And some green for the shadow under the bridge. I'm getting a hooker's green and a touch of yellow in there. Wiggle it again for the movement of the water. And a violet and a bit of green for underneath. The bridge. There we go. And that will be just a little bit of reflection in there and a little bit of yellow ochre perhaps under there, a bit of reflected light which makes it not quite so dead and dense. Put a bit of green there and a slight dark line there. Bringing in some orange and burnt sienna at the bottom here. And softening it. There. The bridge needs a bit of attention, so I'm putting some violet and burnt sienna with a touch of the green into this section. Maybe I'll fill that there and place in just a few green doors at the back. There, into the water, into the water, and we'll let that dry there. Using the number eight brush again, I'm going to paint in a few of the areas with the shadows just to give it again a little bit more form and inside the windows inside that window and underneath there so this is a violet and a touch of blue and if you find that that shadow color is not quite right put in a little bit of burnt sienna and that just takes the brightness away. So I'm putting that colour in there. That colour over there. Putting some burnt sienna in over the top here. And washing that over because the masking fluid has got to show up in this area because it's the railings for the bridge. So we soften that. Then we get some blue, violet, tiny touch of burnt sienna, and wash in this side. Over the light, 
and down that edge. So that edge is in contrast to that. The railings and the edge of the structure of the bridge will also show up. I'm going to put in some slight ready colour, a bit of cadmium red just around here. A bit of colour there, a bit of colour down there I think and into the water. So we've got some extra vibrant colours. Now that won't show up down there so much. And then some greenery into the window boxes. And with a smaller brush I'm just going to drop some red geraniums in there and on the top there. And a few streaks of texture in here. So you don't have to be too careful. But that's grey and a dab of cadmium red. Venice is full of decaying brickwork, but it's beautiful for us, for us painters, but not so good for the structure of the building. This is grey, just a little bit more grey there, and dabbing some texture into there. Bigger brush again, washing that. There, and I think we're just, oh, just a little touch of blue in there. Oh, and in there, tiny touch of blue at the back. Just put the last coating of the paint on there and then we'll wait until it dries and then we can rub off the masking fluid. Now is the time to rub off the masking fluid. Press hard. It really does need to be very dry because otherwise it will drag the paper and tear it. So all is now revealed. With my number four brush, I'm going to wash in a bit of brighter colour, orangey yellow, just on the edge here. The top of the window, over the shutters on both sides, so it's got a glow. Acrylics are beautiful for doing a glow, as the bottom layer, of course, because it's dry, it won't stir up at all. Glow all the way down into the water. Now, if you don't want it quite so bright, I'm putting some yellow ochre, so it's just softening, but not quite as bright as in the other areas. I'm going to leave this nice and light because that's actually catching the sun. And these blue because they are in the shadows. This is cobalt blue with a tiny touch of violet. And those shapes fall right back into the shadows. Taking this with it as well. And I'm going to put a bit of blue in on the back here. A little bit of blue in there. A little bit there. Perhaps not quite so much as there. And dab a bit of that out because I want it to be a bit more sunny just there. Blue across this edge and blue down here. And taking this violety blue, I'm going to put 
even darker at the back. So this will take this edge further back here and bring this further forward. There. And some shadows under here. Some shadows down here. This is what brings the whole picture alive when you start putting these shadows in. That can be darker. And of course the beauty of acrylic is that if you don't like what you've done, you can just rub it straight off. Bits of yellow. And this is where you can do it quite thickly if you want to. Blobs of colour, nice and thick. I'm going to put some just a little bit of detail into here. Don't want to lose that too much. And I'm going to put a bit more shadow over there, lifting it slightly because I put it in a bit too dense. That's better. There. Sometimes if it sticks, you can put a bit of water on there and lift it. Yeah, that's better. A bit dark in there. Dark inside there, a bit of dark in there, still a bit darker in there. And I wanted to put some just a bit of palette knife work in over here. Some bricks so that just breaks up the surface makes it a bit more interesting a bit more bright orange and white you could work for hours like this go on and on adding more and more texture I just love texture with a palette knife. It's great fun. Bring a bit more, a bit more light in there. And some light across here. There we go. So it's lovely and thick and buttery. it through this and pull it down. Perhaps a little bit lighter just the other side. A bit more texture on there. A little bit of texture down here. I'm going to put some just a bit more details into here. So the, the railings have got a bit of light and shade on them. That crosses there. It's got a bit more shadow on there. This has got just some light bits. A flick of light in there. There. There's also some reflected light just dragged over here as well. Even a, a dark shadow has some light places and objects within it. You don't like it. It doesn't have to be dense and dark all over. Just these areas that are quite important. There we are. Just drag that over the top. And there's a, a lightish area in underneath there that can be dragged down. 
catching the light. Bit of light there. And a nice light area on the top. There we go. There. Put this last bit of detail in. Light there. Perhaps a bit of detail there. A window at the back. Some details there. Perhaps another bit there. Taking a bit of light yellow, that's white and the yellow, I'm just sharpening up this edge here and dragging a bit more light into that shadow. There we go. So the light is just reflected perhaps off the bridge. Round here a bit more and just sharpening that edge up. Getting some I need a little bit of yellow down here. I'm just doing the last touches of orange with the white and just sharpening up the edges of this bit of the building here. There we go. Down we go. Just drag this bit across there. And trying to keep this quite straight looking and just drag a little bit more of that into the shadowed area. A little bit over the bridge. that up a bit more. Last tiny little detail with this and the edge. There. And this is with a small number four brush. Right, I think that's finished. Venice is fabulous, isn't it? The canal scenes are quite mouth-watering and I hope you enjoy painting this scene as much as I have. <laughs>